In the headlines, 16-year-old Point Michelle student could face criminal charges for staging her own kidnapping. Police called upon to be more proactive in their crime-fighting efforts. And a radio station to be established in the Kayanago territory later this year. I am Andrea Lee with the Channel 5 News, back with the details after this. Imagine, you have Hollywood at your command. Introducing Flow Evil. Red cheese, gold rings, all black, everything creeping through the night. Anywhere you are. Big girls don't scream hard like Halloween, make me feel alive. There's a world of entertainment here, and you run the show. Flow Evil. Here are some tips to reduce mosquito presence in and around your home. Keep water storage containers properly covered. Remove containers that can collect water from your surroundings. Keep garbage bins tightly covered. Pick up your litter and remove all tires from your yard. Keep gutters free of leaves and twigs to prevent stagnant water. Prevent Zika, Dengue and Chikungunya. Fight the bite! This is a public service announcement from the Dominica Red Cross. This message is supported by Flo. Thank you for staying with us. First up, Deputy Chief of Police Lincoln Corbett says the police are no longer dealing with the 16-year-old girl's matter as an alleged abduction, but instead how she can be charged. Julian Morris reports. Corbett told a news conference on Monday the police were seeking to institute criminal charges against the 16-year-old for wasting their time. The deputy police chief says over 60 officers were on duty searching for the young lady at various checkpoints looking for a car fitting the description which she gave. We could have very well be required to do another, another report somewhere else. And here we are, hundreds of man hours, thousands of dollars searching for somebody who don't want to be found, making a false report. So we're quite distilled, very, very distilled, and we're going, to, we're going to take this report very, very, very seriously. As I said, it's very likely that charges will be instituted against her. Uh, a lot of cases been before where we had teenagers missing. No reports were made by them, saying that they were kidnapped or they were <coughs> abducted. Some of them were, would have just gone, left the house, and showed up three, four days later on their own. But they did not make a report saying, oh, hello, my daughter or, or son was abducted or kidnapped. That's a completely different report. Okay, you, you will have from time to time children behaving that way, okay? That's a different case. In cases where they, they leave their house, fine, they should not do it. We we'll refer them to, to um, social welfare for Hong and that sort of thing. But this one is clearly a criminal act. That's a criminal act. You, you attempted to, to put the police in bad light, making a false report, and having us waste a lot of time. It takes a lot of time. We had to call back men from, from their days off. Men had to be called back, men who had just ended working, hoping to rest, had to be called back for two, three days looking for this young one child, only to find out that is, is the report is a false report. Where simple this time is a criminal charge. Where you um, basically make a face false report. To the police? To the police. Mm -hmm. And the police will have gone out and expended resources and time. But it's a criminal charge. It's not a charge that we use very often, yeah, but it's there, it's a criminal charge. With reference to the multiple shootings over the weekend, the Deputy Police Chief issued a stern warning and welcomed the public's support. We want to assure the public that we're doing everything in our power to stop this surge or this scourge of, of gun violence in, in the community. Um, last year, as a matter of fact, we seized over 23 firearms. We took a lot of people into custody and a lot of people brought to court. Again this year, we're doing the same thing. We're not relenting. We're pushing as hard as we can. But the criminals must know that if they break the law, we come in for them. We're not fearful. We are committed to the task. We'll be working as hard as we can to rid the streets of all those illegal firearms. Um, we also encourage members of the public to provide any information, that is, any information that can assist us in solving the issues of, of, of the shootings that we have over the weekend. Any related news? The announcement by the Deputy Chief of Police that the 16-year-old girl from Point Michel at the center of an alleged kidnapping last weekend could be charged is not meeting the approval of one individual who has worked in law enforcement for 30 years in the United Kingdom. 
Retired Scotland Air Detective David Michael says he fully supports the police in their efforts, but he has a different perspective on the current situation. With my background and experience, both as a senior investigating officer of serious and organised crime, including kidnapping, uh, successfully investigating many uh, kidnaps uh, and abductions, and also uh, with my background as uh, being a former head of police child protection for a London borough, I am a bit, I am quite disturbed with the latest police response. Uh, naturally, if police believe their time was wasted, I can understand they're not happy about that. However, we're still dealing with a child. Um, us as the general public, we don't know if it's a vulnerable child. Um, but it is a child, and I believe the police should be doing a lot more investigation into her background and circumstances to find out what uh, her circumstances are before coming out publicly that they're looking to bear down on her and prosecute her and looking for whatever they can. I think that is a very unfortunate turn of events. Michael believes whatever action is taken to address this issue surrounding the 16-year-old should be in line with the United Nations Convention on the Rights of the Child. When we think of the United Nations Rights of the Child and generally how we should treat our children and as whether it's, it's the government, whether it's if, 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 uh, if the members of the authorities and if members of the general public took the time to read the United Nations uh, uh, Convention on the Rights of the Child, we'll see that both the state and the uh, institutions, institutions of the state and uh, the rest of us have a duty to safeguard and promote the welfare of our children. And I think the Chief of Police, the Deputy Chief, the Head of the CID and uh, the National Security uh, Ministry should be approach, having that kind of approach to our children and young people. Yes, yeah, some of them will go off the rails, some of them will make mistakes, some of them will actually break the law. But our approach should be dealing with a child-centred approach to whatever circumstances is thrown up. And yes, we shouldn't have children in adult prisons, we shouldn't have children in remanded in detention with adults, if we haven't got that, it's something that needs urgent attention. In other news, a call on the police to be more proactive in their crime-fighting strategies. While the police have reported several incidents involving guns last weekend, they have stopped short of explaining to the public what this all means in terms of whether an amnesty is needed for what appears to be guns in the wrong hands. As I've been on record before, I support the Commonwealth of Dominica Police Force and all our institutions wholeheartedly and I think um, we need to keep reviewing how we approach things. So for example, it would, it's not, it would be more helpful rather than a press uh, relations officer just factually telling us there's been a shooting there, there's been a shooting there, there's been a fatality this one is not life-threatening. I think we need a bit more and that's where I personally think my personal view is that the head of CID should come on board for these on occasions like that and actually say to the Dominican people uh, it's regrettable that we've had three shootings in uh, two or three days in quick su succession and give us some analysis as to whether they, those shootings are connected uh, in themselves, whether they're connected with any past uh, shootings or homicides with firearms, and the fact that they are being investigated uh, diligently, and keep asking the members of the public for their help and assistance to resolve these uh, shootings. So I think we really need, uh, the, the, the PRO does an excellent job, I have to say, I'm, I, I, I welcome the information we receive from the inspector, the PRO, but I think when you have two or three shootings in quick succession, 
it'd be really helpful if the head of CID came on your news, came on the radio, and gave the people of Dominica a, a better explanation as to exactly where we are, um, the nature of how police are investigating the matters vigorously and uh, exhaustively, and how always asking for the help and assistance of the public, not only help and assistance from law-abiding citizens, but help and assistance from people who may have a criminal record, who may have got in trouble in the past, but would have some information, intelligence and evidence that would help the police investigation make that appeal. We need that all the time. Michael commends the police for greater visibility on policing the streets. The retired Scotland Yard detective says he has offered and is available for assistance to the Ministry of Justice and the police. In other developments, senior pastor of a Truth and Grace Fellowship Global, Pastor Randy Rodney, says the developments regarding the 16-year-old Point Michelle girl are very serious and speaks to a deeper issue of where we are as a country. Pastor Randy says there are a few issues that must be looked at. He says reducing the age of consent from 18 to 16 presents certain problems which are manifesting right now. We have had a number of young women in societies either disappearing from their homes, leaving their homes voluntarily or, or, or whatever the case is. Reports have been made of missing girls uh, that are subsequently some of them have been found um, and uh, various things has happened uh, as far as the public mind is concerned. We have not had a lot of police involvement in, in that in terms of charging people as far as I know. Uh, but I believe that, that at the foundation of this is where society is. This society that we live in now, Dominica, is a society where just a few short years ago, we were having a big discussion on reducing the age of consent for sex. And this was a big issue that, that some of us made a, a whole uh, a point about, that, and that point was, was ignored. When you reduce the, the age of consent, sexual consent for a, for a young person from 18 to 16, uh, that person can say yes to any man, doesn't matter what the age, they can say yes, you can have sex with me. However, that person by law is under the jurisdiction of their parents. That child leaves home, says yes to a man, but under the jurisdiction of their parents. Um, well, the police is in a quandary as far as that's concerned because the girl can say yes to sex, right? But they are responsible for the parents, for which the police doesn't have any law to say go back to your parents' home. Okay? In this particular case, the, the story of abduction is one where a young, young person, in my view, used a, a story to get away from their home if that's what happened, or was taken away from their home if that's what happened. I do not know what the case is. In that particular case, the woman, the young woman, the young girl needs attention. Something is not right. And when I say something is not right, I mean psychologically, emotionally, physically, something is not right with this young woman. What is the history? What is the upbringing? What are the environmental conditions? What has gone wrong with this girl if something has gone wrong? Why did she make that decision? And, and in order to get this, you need to be able to have a conversation with the young lady from, from a professional perspective. Uh, what I think has gone on in the media about what uh, has happened or has not happened with her, I don't think is right. Quite frankly, I don't think you must walk on an individual um, when they have done wrong, even if you think they have done wrong. Uh, because people do wrong for all kinds of reasons. Uh, and so that needs to be addressed from a, a perspective where you can restore that young woman to sanity, back to a place where she can make right decisions for herself. Pastor Rodney believes it is important that justice be meted out in an even-handed manner because, as he put it, the children are taking note. The society, unfortunately and sadly, is growing increasingly lawless. And is growing increasingly lawless, in my humble view, because those who are supposed to be the custodians of the law and the trustees of principles are violating themselves flagrantly. And when children see that, that uh, principles are flagrantly violated, they have a tendency to follow. We, we all learn that children learn what they see. 
And we need to get back to the place where we all understand that the small breaking of principles by adults will give a large principle to children. And so it's a, it's a societal problem that I've been crying for years now that we need to sit down and look at holistically. The police, the welfare division, the, the church, the government authorities, parenting, whatever you want. Everybody must come together to look at the society holistically because that is just one of the things that's happening that's symptomatic of a greater problem. All the shootings are wrong, for example. That is symptomatic of a greater problem. The, the, the fact that some people can think that they, will do, they can do what they want as they please is symptomatic of a greater disease. And we need to make up our minds to get back to deal with the, the real disease and not the symptom. Simply put, Julian, you drive in Roseau. Somebody is wasting your time driving as slow as they want. They stop to speak to everybody on the street. And if you but toot your horn, you are the person who's at fault. Right? That is symptomatic of a greater problem. And we need to make some way of sitting down with level-headed minds and, and, and begin to plot a path forward for a better development of our society. You are watching the Channel 5 News. Stay tuned for more after the break. If you're HIV positive or have an STI, having unprotected sex with multiple partners puts them in grave danger. You'll expose every partner and their present and future partners to HIV or another STI. Use a condom every time you have sex. You can live a productive life even if diagnosed with HIV. Remember, early detection is key to your survival. Be responsible, protect yourself and others. Help stop the spread of HIV and other STIs. Welcome back. A radio station for the indigenous people of Dominica remains on the development plans for the Kainago Territory. Member of Parliament for the Salibé constituency, Cassius Daru, says partners in the French islands will play an integral part in establishing a radio station in the Kainago Territory. First Maria, the Kainago chief and I we went to, to Godloop, well, our neighbours. Because we felt that we have a lot of our Kalinago brothers in the neighboring countries that could assist us. So we went there and based on the call that we made, there is a, a, a guy who, who has an organization called Soleido. And group, um, what is it? Group Sacrifices Populaire. And we were just discussing the possibility of how can we enhance the communication system within the constituency in terms of disaster. While ham operators and, and hand radio, whatever, may assist, but we were thinking of the rich, and we came up with this idea of uh, community radio. Daru says a radio station in the Salibé constituency has been long in the making, and he hopes to see it materialize this year. The aim of having it is still existing, and, and we are still in discussion as to how we get this radio station functional in the Kalinago territory. Because if we have this radio station in the Kalinago territory, we could disseminate information to our brothers and sisters instantly and let them know what is happening. Because sometimes the information is there, but it doesn't reach everybody. We would love for information to reach everybody so that we can all have collective decision when it is required. So the, it's on the cards and I'm hoping that it happens this year. Oh, pretty soon. I understand from the guy, um, well, he's Max Baudo. Um, I understand that some of the components are already being assembled for, for shipment, so I hope it can materialize very soon. Apart from a radio station, other systems are being looked at to sustain communication in the territory, especially following a natural disaster. Because we realize every time there is a disaster, the country is cut off. If Pigwa is cut off and Kasubis is cut off, the Kalinago territory stands alone. So what we are doing now also we are in consultation with the council for us to establish an emergency complex. Mm -hmm. The emergency complex is an area that will be developed for us to be able to survive at least for a month if things get bad and, and for us to have communication with the outside. So it's, it's more of a complex where, where we will have adequate storage where we could accommodate at least 500 or 700 people at any one point. And 
use it also as a community center where people can come to participate in various activities and stuff. So once it is organized with the radio station, we will relocate it to this area where we will call it our control center to communicate with our brothers and sisters. It's full steam ahead for Jazz and Creole 2019. Julian Morris has that story. With the conclusion of Mass Dominic 2019, the Dominica Festivals Committee has now turned its full attention on the country's next flagship tourism event, Jazz and Creole. Acting Festival and Events Manager of the DFC, Marva Williams, says planning for the event began several months ago and work is continuing to ensure it is a success. Well, we launched Jazz on Creole on January 22nd. It was at the Joss Stone event. We already presented three artists. We have the Smith Brothers. We have Mel. Uh, Mel, she was, she's formerly known as Mel C. We know she's making it big in the French West Indies now. So it's, we're really, really excited to have her as part of the Jazz on Creole lineup. And we also have Joanne Chokery. Joanne Chokery is a top panist from Trinidad and Tobago. So he's going to be an exciting addition. We are currently working on two more big acts to add probably one local and one foreign to add to the Jazz and Creole lineup. You may have already seen our teaser, so right now everything is going to go into Jazz and Creole mode. This year's Jazz and Creole has also seen a change in date. Normally the event would be held on Pentecost Sunday, which this year is the 9th of June. However, Williams explained that the date was changed to 5th of May to avoid competition with a popular festival in the French West Indies and thereby accommodate the expected increase in French visitors. And we know for all events we do in Dominica, the French West Indies and you know some of the, a lot of the English speaking Caribbean, they are the ones who patronize our events. So you know sometimes some things in life it's like trial and error. So we had to look at the Dominican calendar of events as well as uh, that of the Caribbean. Um, it was very, very tough. Because, I mean, we have a lot of events that all events would compete with. We also had to consider our patrons locally. You know, that's why we chose a weekend where the Monday is a holiday. Because, uh, I mean, our patrons have been the ones really, really supporting the event. And I've said it before, your, your people in your island first, or your patrons, your local patrons have to be happy. And then you make other people happy. In accordance with the DFC's mandate of increasing tourist arrivals to the island, Williams says several fringe events leading up to the day will be hosted in order to attract more visitors to Dominica around the Jazz and Creole event. We have a number of, of fringe events, yes. We have a number of stakeholders who have showed interest. Uh, we have promoted the 3rd to the 5th, so obviously we will have events from the 3rd on the 4th, you know, um, some in Roseau, probably in Portsmouth. But there are local event organizers who are planning on having events on, you know, a week of activities or even the weekend before that actual weekend of Jazz and Creole. So we just, I guess we're going into Jazz and Creole discussion now, so they're going to come at me, you know, with all the ideas so we can fit it into a calendar. Jazz and Creole scheduled for 2 p.m. on Sunday 5th May at the Cabridge National Park in Portsmouth is into its 10th year this year. And owner and developer of the Jungle Bay Resort and Spa is promising a suite of resilient buildings for its guests. The new Jungle Bay Resort and Spa is being constructed at Monakuma in Sufre after its original location in Dallas was severely damaged by Tropical Storm Erica in 2015. Sam Raphael, who is bringing this new site to life, says resilient building codes have been incorporated into the construction of the property's villas. We had an excellent product in the old Jungle Bay, but it didn't uh, survive the the, the, yeah, the, the climate, so we talk about climate resilience now. We're building it in a rigid way, so everything you see, even what with the shingles on it or the wood, it's all tied, steel, reinforced, uh, concrete, uh, but we've softened it up with, with the, the feel of the wood and the feel of the, um, of the shingles, so that because our guests they want to feel that natural feel and they don't want to feel that they're in a concrete bunker. But we need to make sure they're in a concrete bunker. So we're building it in a way that it's resilient, but still keeping that natural, you know, soft feel. 
According to Raphael, the material for constructing the new buildings is sourced both locally and abroad. He says sturdy material is being used to ensure secure buildings for visitors. Well, it's a pretty big project, so we have to import a lot of things. But we try to use uh, as much of what we can find on site as possible to start. So what we have on site is stones. So all the stones that you see around come from the site. Timber is imported because we don't have the, the, uh, we don't have the timber industry, but we bring in some hardwood that's sustainably sourced. And that's pretty much in terms of mo much of the, the, the wood and stone. The, uh, the sheeting uh, for it uh, is made locally. We use a local supplier to make it, uh, it's all cut to size. So that's an advantage of using a local supplier. So they're kind of, you know, we balance, we try to use as much uh, as we can find locally, and then we have to supplement with what we bring in. Raphael says despite the progress at the resort, there are still challenges in obtaining material, but he is confident the resort will be ready for its opening date. I mean, Dominica isn't the only place that got hit by a storm. Huh? We've got all these other islands from Puerto Rico, the U.S. British Virgin Islands, Anguilla, um, St. Martin, Barbuda, and so on. So everyone's competing for materials. It's difficult, you know, transporting the materials, even if you can source them internationally. The, the transport system is limited between, you know, the, the source points and delivery to Dominica. So we have many challenges that we continue to overcome and these we expect and these are standard uh, but we also have uh, new challenges i'm sure that will come up but we'll you know we are resilient people resilience is not just the buildings you know we have to be resilient people too and be prepared to take up the challenges the first phase of the new jungle bay resort and spa is due to open on 1st june 2019. imagine Hollywood at your command. Introducing Flow Evil. Red cheese, gold rings, all black, everything creeping through the night. Anywhere you are. Big girls don't scream hard like Halloween, make me feel alive. There's a world of entertainment here, and you run the show. Flow Evil. Here are some tips to reduce mosquito presence in and around your home. Keep water storage containers properly covered. Remove containers that can collect water from your surroundings. Keep garbage bins tightly covered. Pick up your litter and remove all tires from your yard. Keep gutters free of leaves and twigs to prevent stagnant water. Prevent Zika, Dengue and Chikungunya. Fight the bite! This is a public service announcement from the Dominica Red Cross. This message is supported by Flo. To end the news, the headlines again. 16-year-old Point Michelle student could face criminal charges for staging her own kidnapping. Police called upon to be more proactive in their crime-fighting efforts. And a radio station to be established in the Kayanago Territory later this year. Feel free to contact us at news at marpin2k4.com. You can also access our past newscasts on our YouTube channel. On behalf of the entire production team, I am Andrea Louis. And to all of our viewers around the world, thank you so much for watching. Join us next time.